Back here, everyone, with the primary election wrapping up, we are starting to see who will advance to November's general election. We are tracking a number of races this morning, including some impacting South Bay voters. There were two races for the 80th State Assembly District, one to fill the remaining term. Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez left open when she resigned. And here's a look at the numbers here. You've got David Alvarez with 56% and George uh, Georgette Gomez with 44%. The other race is to fill the next two-year term for that 80th Assembly. Assembly District, but look at this. The numbers are flipped. Georgette Gomez, 35% of the vote to David Alvarez's 32%. And the race for Chula Vista's next mayor is also being narrowed down to two candidates who will face off in the November election. You have John McCann out with 31%. And then there's a race for second place there. You got Amar Campanajar with 22%, with Jill Galvez's 20%. And we have political analyst John Dadian here to sit down with us, break down some of the results here. Let's talk about the 80th, John, sure. if we can. Why that flip? Is that unusual to have two candidates flip when there's the shorter race versus the longer one? It's not unusual at all, and I'll give you an example in a moment of uh, what, why this has happened in the past in San Diego. But the real question is, would you want to be... Uh, David Alvarez or Georgette because David Alvarez yeah. will now have the title in November will have the title assembly member on the ballot sure and that's huge they say a good ballot designation can give you between a five and seven percent bump oh I see so that's absolutely true plus he'll be for the next seven months he'll be up there he'll be voting yeah. he'll be able to send out you know constituency email so that's huge so in that sense you want to be David Alvarez on the other hand Georgette Gomez if she uh, looking pretty good ahead for the full two-year term she doesn't care if she's not an assembly member for seven months as long as she's an assembly yeah. member for the next several years so that's a pros and cons can you, can you tell me why a voter would vote one way for one candidate for the shorter run the seven months and maybe potentially another way because we did see enough swings where there had to have been some voters that flip-flopped there there's several reasons, but probably the biggest reason is, th so there will be a total of four elections within six months, including the November election. Because this is a special election, redistricting happens every 10 years, so the lines changed. Okay. So the, for the special election, it was in the old 80th, which Lorena uh. Gonzalez-Fletcher represented, but the lines changed, and that's why she couldn't run again during the district. So now, now both these candidates were in both both areas, and that's why they could run in both elections. Gotcha. Um, there were some expected results, and you know, for governor and everything. But um, anything that surprised you out of all of the state and local races, John? No surprises. It was nothing, huh? It was a very boring election. Now, another issue a lot of people have been talking about is the low voter turnout. Yeah. Again, many reasons for that, but one of the major reasons is just a boring election. I mean, and now keep in mind also. Well, another major reason, under the top two type of scenario that we got right now, the majority of races, the two people in the primary are going to be the same in November. I, t I like to talk to the average man and woman on the street, and they told me, why, why do I have to bother in the primary? I'll have the same two in the general election. Well, the answer is because if there's three or four candidates, you're helping out to pick the top two, right? Um, but not a whole lot of people were thinking that way with the low turnout we had. That's correct. But again, there were many races that there were only two people. That's true. And a little quirk, for example, uh, state and federal and local uh, laws can be different. But for example, in several county races, there were only two people. So they didn't even appear on the June ballot. They'll go automatically till November. Like the Jim Desmond County Supervisor seat, there were only two candidates. So there wasn't even even a primary county assessor county treasurer all of those uh, they didn't even appear on the ballot. any races that uh, people should be particularly looking close as we're still waiting for some of those numbers to come in anything that uh, you feel is re pretty razor thin at this point sure clearly the sheriff's race for the number two sl slot without a doubt clearly the Chula Vista mayor's race for the number two slot uh, no doubt but the sheriff's race Kelly Martinez is looking pretty solid for November okay what are we expecting for the uh, the, the, the uh, general election that's going to be coming up here in November with some of these candidates because if they do get the good news that they're the winner, um, they're going to have to hit hit the campaign trail hard here. Oh, absolutely. So the first the first biggest issue is clearly the voter turnout is going to be much higher. Yeah. And uh, that now there's several races, especially locally, that are officially nonpartisan, but you're going to see it turn into a partisan race. For example, in the sheriff's race, if John Hemmerling is number two, because uh, he's a Republican, yeah. he was the only Republican. Uh, clearly, the, both parties will be putting money into that race. Absolutely. There'll be a lot more ahead here. John, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Always appreciate it. Thank you.